Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to beautiful Nicaragua. We're here in my coffee farm. In today's video, I'm going to show you something very cool. In 10 simple steps, I'm going to show you how a cup of coffee is made from scratch. Now, when I say from scratch, I mean from the very beginning. Take a look at this. This is a coffee plant right here. And we have the coffee cherries, the coffee beans, and the roasted coffee with your cup of coffee that you drink in the morning before you go to work and knock everything out so right now we're gonna walk to each step and how it goes from a plant cherry beans roasted in your cup while you're driving to work so it's gonna be an interesting fun video hopefully you guys like it let's go ahead and get started 10 steps how to make a cup of coffee from scratch step numero uno number one mi amigos it's harvest time so we have to find the coffee plant to go pull off the coffee beans now here in Nicaragua what they use is this, a basket, also known as a canasta or a tina. It is common for this to be tied around your waist and then the workers will go out at five or six in the morning and give it a couple hours harvesting cherries. Right now, since the only thing we're making is a cup of coffee, we're gonna spend a few minutes. We are in one of my lots here on my farm and we picked this tree here, one, because it's convenient and we're kind of lazy, two, because it's beautifully ripened. Look at this, look at the cherries, how beautiful the color is and these are ready to be picked so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and we're just gonna start picking one by one and this is how the life of a coffee picker goes now we're blessed that there's a lot of cherries that are mature and red but when it's first early in the season you'll have some green ones some yellow ones and some red ones so the picker will have to make sure they do a good job of selecting what comes off the tree because you want to make sure you only get the ripe ones so they taste the best. So right now we'll spend some time picking some beautiful cherries. Well, well, well guys, look at that. Look how beautiful that looks. Those are the coffee beans. The beans everyone loves in the morning. So now that we harvested our beans, the plant is looking empty. We're gonna go to step number two. So generally, here in Nicaragua, the person will keep on going, the worker, until he fills up the top of it, and then he'll transfer it to a sack of coffee and continue throughout the day. He'll pick around 10 to 12 of these if he's a fast worker. A lot of hard labor, let me tell you. If you wanna come over here to Nicaragua and get your hands on picking coffee, I need the help. So just DM me or message me on Instagram. Let's go to step number two. All right, here's our hard labor, our morning cup of coffee. All right, so let me show you now. We have right here the beautiful coffee and the pulp has been removed. As you can see that the coffee has this coating around it and it's very slimy and sticky. It's what we call mucilage. In order for it to be removed, we have to let it ferment so we can wash it away with water. And during the fermentation process, this is when it develops flavors. Now the fermentation process can get a little complicated, same way you would ferment bread or beer. Depending on your recipe, you can develop different flavors. But to keep things simple, we're gonna leave it in the bucket for around 16 hours and then we're gonna wash it to continue to the next drying process. The coffee's been fermenting now for about 16 hours. So we're gonna add some water there uh, so we can get it washed. There you go. Now that the water is in the bucket, what we wanna do is uh, we want to go ahead and just start turning it around and washing the coffee. So you can look at the water, so the water it's starting to become this murky color right here. So this water actually, you can't introduce this in, back into the rivers because it's bad for nature. So you have to put it either in a system to break it down or find a way to process the water so you can take the, take the sugar off of it. All right, so now that what we can see inside the bucket here is that you see some beans that are floating. So these beans right here are no good. We want to remove them. Um, they didn't develop properly and the density of the bean is not correct. So we want to take them out because that's going to affect the morning cup of coffee we're trying to make here. And we want to make a really delicious one, right? So you enjoy it. 
All right, round number two. So you can see round number two, the water now is starting to get a lot clearer. Uh, we're getting we're getting places. We're getting there. We're closer to that cup of coffee. So, so it's not as murky as last time. Last time had a, a darker color. Okay, so we have our coffee, guys. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna spread it out so we can get the coffee drying. And on top of that, we are gonna go ahead and start sorting the coffee, visually sorting the coffee. Those are coffees that you do not want them to proceed to the next step because they will affect your cup of coffee. And we want you to have a delicious cup of coffee. Drying is a very important step in how your cup of coffee tastes at the end. Now there's a lot of ways to dry coffee, but in this video, we want to keep everything simple, basic. I'll make other videos in the future explaining more into detail how the way you dry, the way you ferment, the way you depulp can impact your final cup of coffee. Okay, lo deja ir, tira. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. All right, all right. All right, guys, it's been over two weeks. The coffee's been drying slowly. The rooster's awake right now. Um, and then, as you can see, the coffee is ready to go to the next stage of our cup of coffee. So check it out. Uh, what we have here is now what we call coffee in the parchment stage. So the coffee is fully dry and the outer layer, the husk, is ready to be removed. See? And there is what we call a green coffee bean. So this green coffee bean will go to the roasting process. But before it can go to the roasting process, we need to take the husk off. And this is where this piece of wood comes into play right now. So I am here with Blanca actually, who lives at my farm. She's been living here for over 10 years and she's a pro at this, professional. Blanca, ¿cómo le llaman esto? Este se llama pilador. ¿Y usted cuánto tiempo lo ha usado? Yo casi cada 15 días lo estoy usando. Cada 15 días, ok. Nos va a enseñar el proceso entonces. ¿Cómo es el proceso? So she's going to keep on going up and down until the parchment is removed outside the coffee. Now this form of removing parchment is very old school, very artisanal, and you're going to find this in all the small farms. There's also equipment that's being used now for commercial level. But since this is a small batch, we want to do everything artisanal, small, and simple. I know it looks like we're beating the crap out of the coffee, but trust me, it's gonna taste good. I know so much goes into a cup of coffee. In the first of the video, I said it was 10 steps. I started this video and then I was like, Jesus, this is gonna be more than 10 steps. So either way, we're still gonna get that cup of coffee at the end of the video. Goes to show, we're trying to keep it simple, but it's very complex. There's a lot of hands that touch this coffee. Wow, would you look at that, amazing. Look at this. Ya está listo el café para tostar. Señor. Wow, quedó super bueno. Estamos en mi cocina, vamos a tostar el café. Ya cuando truene lo vamos a piar. Now we can see the color starting to change on the coffee. So it's becoming a dark yellow. And when the colors start to change in the coffee, the smells start to change. It will go from a vegetation smell when it's green to a hay smell when it's a dark yellow. And then to like a sugary smell when they start caramelizing and turning brown. So it's different smells throughout the process. It's kind of like baking bread. When you're baking bread towards the end, it smells delicious in the house. So you want to take it out already. Same thing with, with coffee here. <laughs> All right, guys, here we have our roasted coffee. Now, this is what everyone drinks in the morning. It probably looks similar to what you see at your job right when you get in but we've gone from the plant all the way to this point. Now it's time to almost drink some coffee. Let's get to brewing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grind this coffee. Usually I let my roasted coffee rest for a day, 
But uh, to be honest, I can't wait any longer. We've uh, been making this video for 14 years now. We need to drink coffee right now. <laughs> so we're going to put some uh, coffee in here. And we're going to go ahead and grind some coffee. All right. Wow, that smells delicious. I wish you had smell -o vision or something because this smells good. Look at it. Even though it was a dark roast. All those aromas, wow, I'm, I'm surprised. So let's get to brewing right now. And then we have the best coffee in the world here. We're gonna throw some in there and we're gonna mix it with some boiling water right now. There you go. All that hard work, blood, sweat, and tears into there. And then we're just gonna let it steep right there. And there you have it. We're gonna wait for a little bit. We almost there, we're almost there, I promise. El café ya está listo. Oh my God. Ah. Look at that. Oh man, feels like it's raining coffee from the heavens right now. <laughs> Look at that delicious cup of coffee there. It's been an incredible journey to say the least. From the very start to this right now. Incredible how many people touch a cup of coffee. Ah, what a magical moment right now. So we have two cups of coffee. Uh, one for me and one for Blanca because she has been helping me. So we're going to pour a little bit of that that liquid gold. And we're going to try it. So we're going to give her that. Blanca. Pruébalo y me dice que piensa. Quedó fuerte. <laughs> Strong. Fuerte. Fuerte. Está. Pero bueno. Está bueno, pero está bueno de gusto. Tiene un gusto rico. Pero está fuerte. Le falta azúcar. Azúcar amargo. <laughs> yeah, she said that obviously because here they love sugar in their coffee. But let me try. Let me try. Wow, that is delicious. Oh my god. Wow, it's it, it's so juicy. <clears throat> it's hard to explain. These flavors are. Even though the roast is just a dark roast and it was roasted in a pan. Imagine if you put it actually in a, an official roaster, the flavors you can get out of this. Wow, I'm going to be drinking this for the next four days. I got two pounds of this bad boy here. Man, let me tell you, it's been an incredible journey making that cup of coffee from start to finish. I hope you enjoyed the video and you saw how much work goes into this. This was basic. We try to keep it simple. We try to keep it artisanal. But if you can imagine a large farm, how many hands touch your cup of coffee? This is what this channel is about, showing you behind the cup of coffee and doing good things here in Nicaragua. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like and share, because as long as you guys keep on doing that, I'll know you guys are liking the videos and I'll keep on making them for you. I'll push out as much as I can. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching and God bless.